This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. From heaven, they're sending all those holy souls into one place with one purpose. Like the verse is saying, Hoi kol tzameh Everyone that is thirsty should go to the water source, to the well to drink. Now it's written on the shepherds that when the shepherds came to water their herds to satisfy their flocks, they were not able to supply the water because there was a stone, a huge boulder that was blocking the well and not letting those shepherds have that simple access to the water, to water their friends. And then, one time it was Yaakov Avinu, Jacob, our father, and one time it was Moses, and both of them, they had that ability to remove that stone, that blocking stone from the well and to provide the water for the, the ones who need it. The water of the Torah, the fresh water, are pure and are healing, but there are huge obstacles that are blocking us from enjoying those pure water. <coughs> the obstacles in every generation is different, are different. Sometimes those are financial issues, sometimes those are wars that are taking place in certain generations, sometimes it's the distance, sometimes it's the teachers, the rabbis are not knowing exactly how to, to pass the message to their followers. But in some generations, they're like ours. Even though that it seems like the obstacles are external, we're all facing financial issues and we're all dealing with families that are not always supportive. We all have our um, companies and have our like issues with society, with friends that are not accepting our change and, and things that we're going through. And even though that we are experiencing many difficulties from the outside world, the main boulder and the main difficulty that we are experiencing is a spiritual barrier. It's an inner... Shalom Aleich. This is one of my best friends. He's a very humble person. This man is one of the first people in my life that opened my eyes in, in like the darkest period of time in my life to recognize that there is Hashem, my friend Gadi. He helped me to realize that I'm Jewish, that we're putting tefillin, that we're eating kosher, that we're keeping Shabbat. Foreign concepts for me back in those days. I owe him a lot. <coughs> the main obstacle, like we said, the main boulder that we need to remove is the inner obstacle that is blocking us from reaching into the inner source of pure water of Torah. Why? Why the spiritual barrier in our generation 
is the main barrier that we need to face and not the physical one. Because today you have thousands of synagogues and Batei Midrashot that you can go and learn Torah. You can learn Torah from thousands and thousands of books that have been printed in millions of copies. You can buy them all online. You can search and find rabbis and sources of knowledge and information. Rabbi Google is number one rabbi in our generation. He's the chief rabbi of the wide truth seekers community in the world. He's answering all questions. And you can find the external Torah very easily, very fast. Welcome. Very fast you can find answers from the outside world to answer your questions. But all those questions are still holding us out from finding the true answer to our inner question, who we really are and what's the real purpose of our lives. Because even though that you realize, okay, I'm Jewish, or okay, I want to be Jewish, or okay, I want to do tshuva, or I want to learn Torah, or I want to find the truth, even if you found that answer, you still don't know how you, as an individual, supposed to do it. Because you have your family, and you have your friends, and you have your obligations, and you have your challenges, your difficulties, you have your weaknesses. You have your inclinations, you have your, your fears, you have your anxieties, you have your traumas, you have your scars that you're carrying with you, you have your emotional pain that you suffer and experience panic attacks on a daily basis. And many, many of us are looking for answers to those questions and you cannot find the answers in the books. And no rabbi in the world, that he will be the most genius person, knowledgeable in the world, he won't be able to give you an answer to an inner question. To the inner question, you need to dive in on your own and to dare to go into those places, into that twilight zone, and to fight with your fears. So for that, we need to find inside of ourselves that righteous person that lives inside of us, that righteous spot, that illuminates spark that shines inside of you, to recognize it and with it to remove that boulder, that blocking stone from the water of faith, from the water of Torah that are coming from within, the inner spring of your wisdom, your connection to your soul. When we are looking into the depths of our souls, over there, deep inside, we can recognize a huge and amazing great source of light. That is our true essence. That is the light of our soul. That is who we are. Now, you can always react and act corresponding to patterns, to the scars, to things that happened to you in your life that taught you that educated you, maybe you can think, to act in a certain way to prevent yourself from sorrow, from pain. So that's why you're laughing, you're making jokes, you learned, you found ways how to avoid, how to run away from too, like, lar too large responsibilities, <coughs> things that are terrifying you, you learned with time, with years, how not to get too involved, how not to get into too much troubles. When you work out of those patterns, you live in denial. You don't live in reality. You don't live your life. You don't live eternal life. The real eternal life is only when you live your life and you take decisions in the present, in the now. Only when you are connected to this situation with your mind, with your heart, and you're asking yourself, should I do it or shouldn't I? Am I supposed to do that thing or 
I'm not supposed to. Only when you are facing your life challenges in real time, you can choose life, you can choose the truth. When you are still running your life on automatic pilot, based on your fears, on your pressures, on pressure, pressure, on your worries, on, 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 on your lusts, on your desires, you are not working from the real voice of your soul. You're not being truthful. You're defending something instead of facing that thing with faith and with confidence in Hashem. A righteous person is a person that believes that the Creator lives with him. He is with you, no matter where you are. You don't need to be righteous that Hashem will be with you. You don't need to be pure. Hashem said that even if you will go to the most contaminated places, Hashem will be there for you. And most of us, at least the luckiest ones of us, the Baal Tshuva, we saw the mercy of Hashem. We saw how the Creator opened our eyes, not because of our purity, not based on our holiness and the merits, just because of His endless love to us. That was the only reason that we opened our eyes, that He opened our eyes and shut off the phones. <laughs> it's not your fault, it's the phones. It's the phones. Good, we know it. Phones are problematic. <laughs> the Creator Himself, He opened our eyes to recognize His godliness when we were in complete darkness. And from that valley of shadows of death, from the lowest place, from the sheets of hell, from, the, from, from rock bottom, He called us from within. And to one He called from Zion, and from one He called from Edom. And for one person woke up by seeing Tiltchelet on Tzitziot. And another person woke up when I started to do tshuva. I was seeing people walking with those tzitziot with p'til t'chelet. I don't know why. I don't have no understanding why. But I was so attracted to that. I felt like it's precious more than gold. It was so valuable for me. Like I wanted to kiss every tzitzit. And I don't know why. I would go and go to springs, to water holes, to, to, to deep, and to make meditations and hit with the duyot in the nature, in, in the uh, villages around Jerusalem, many times. That was my welcome to Judaism. That was my access. Different people been invited for the Shabbos table in families' houses, heard songs of Shabbat. Other people had good friends that would help them to put filin, come my friend, try this, try that. Every person has a different access to the inner gates of his soul. And that's why you must be tuned and aware to your inner voice, to who you are. Because only by connecting yourself to the light of your own soul, you will reveal the true treasures that have been treasured inside of you by the Creator. And that's the purpose of your life, to find out who you are. When Mashiach will come, Mashiach will reveal Tifartenu ugdulatenu, our greatness, our beauty, our glory. Those will be the things that He will reveal to us. He will not gonna scream at us until we're gonna run to serve Hashem. He'll not gonna rebuke us until we will surrender. No, He will come and will uncover the light of our precious souls. We are precious. Not because we made something, we did something, we achieved something. Because the Creator planned the Holy Soul, the divine portion of heaven, into our bodies. And we are all chelek eloka mimal, part of heaven. That's who you are. You can face it, accept it, try to understand what it means, or to run away from it for the rest of your life. 
to live in your fears and in under pressure and being so worried and don't know what's going to be. When you have real faith in Hashem, you know that Hashem is with you. You can forget Hashem, but Hashem cannot forget you. You can lose your connection, your communication with Him, but He never loses His communication with you. When you forget about Him, suddenly a friend will come along the way and will tell you, and another person suddenly going to send you a positive message on, on your mobile and, and going to wake you back up to life. And someone in the street suddenly going to mention a thing that's going to hit your memory and going to open your eyes again to search for Hashem. Why? Because the wide world is full with His honor. And honor means coverings. He's covering Himself in all the people. He's covering Himself in nature, in houses, in furnitures. He's covering Himself in books. And the spark of life that is hidden inside creation is the Creator Himself. That He is the source of life. And you should look for the life. You should look for the good. You should look for the positive light that is shining from within every particle of this creation. And to connect yourself to the good with no fear in your eyes. You should not be scared from non-Jews, from different nations. You don't need to be scared. The Torah is commanding us, Lota Gurumi Pneish. You're not allowed to be afraid of no one. You should be proud of yourself and you should go and spread the truth among all of your surroundings, not to be afraid. Our challenge in this generation is to remove our inner fear, our inner obstacle that is holding us back from connecting ourselves from within to our true source, to the one that we can recognize. When I was a child, I didn't see those things. I was not able to recognize that light. But still, even though that I grew up in a secular environment, secular family, something within was always alive. I felt that something is different in Jerusalem Friday afternoon. It's not the same world. You cannot find that feeling no other place in the world, like in Jerusalem at 6 p.m., at 5 p.m., Quiet is coming down to the world. You can feel it. First time that I came as a Baal Tshuva, when I started to know Hashem, to the Western Wall, and I was standing in front of the wall, and I looked at it, I told my friend that was there with me, I feel like there's water here in the air. Instead of air, I felt like I'm underwater. It's the spirit of the Shekhinah, spirit of godliness. And it lives inside of us. When you're connecting yourself to the connections that are connecting you to Hashem. When you light your candles. When you bake your chalot. When you learn Torah. When you say Tehillim. When you do it Bodedut. When you give charity. When you go to speak to yourself in the mountains. It doesn't matter. You should not judge yourself on the way that you are connecting yourself to Hashem. Because that's the way that the Creator set for you. Designed and built especially for you. Because you have sparks that only you can uplift from those places. Someone need to pray from your porch. And if it won't be you that will live in that house with that porch, no one will do your job because there are sparks that are hidden and locked and treasured over there in that spot. Why? Only Hashem knows why. But it's your mission to rise them. To lift them, to fix them, to recognize them. Because you had Hidbodeduyot on that porch, you were able to speak to Hashem in front of the sea in that specific beach, in that place, in that area. And even while driving your car in traffic, there are sparks over there. There are important sparks that are waiting and we're waiting for you to come and to lift them and to save them. And you should count on Hashem that like that Hashem was there with you to support you in your travels and to open your eyes in your mission to succeed all those amazing success that you had until today. Thank you for coming.
please get inside. I hope there are more seats. That he will be there for you in the future as well in all your journeys. No matter where you will go. I have a friend that called me and asked me, what should I do with my life? I have so many things I don't know and I'm so scared to take decision. I told him, what about Australia? He said, Australia? What are you talking about? I told him, yes, Australia, what's the problem? He said, I'm dreaming about Australia, but no, maybe I should do this. I told him, listen, if you want to hear my advice, go to Australia. <laughs> it will be amazing for you. He said, yes, why? I told him, look. It's not that I'm taking someone from Jerusalem. You're born in Brooklyn. What's the difference between Australia to Brooklyn? Same thing. It's out. It's the exile. You know, you're still out there. Nothing happened. Like, Brooklyn. Oh, wow. The name of a thing. Like, what's Brooklyn? Brown area. It's a, it's a gray area. Like, nothing over there. Like, hollow and empty. There are precious souls that are walking over there and I know some precious souls that are walking in Australia as well. Not any kind of kangaroos in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> that guy listened to me and made a few phone calls and already someone helped him and he found a, a very decent job and already someone offered to him to meet with a woman his age, very nice lady with good me daughter, very nice person things start to open for him before he even made one step, only an inner step of really wanting to follow the light of Hashem. When I, in the beginning of my tshuva process, realized that I need to serve Hashem, I didn't want it. That. It was not my thing at all. I felt so disconnected from Judaism to look orthodox and to start wearing those panda uniforms, like, I didn't feel comfortable with that, it was not my cup of tea. It wasn't an option at all. I was clubbing, we were dancing, I had my spikes belts and my Dr. Martins, my friend, <laughs> please, I'm telling everyone, he will testify on me, I'm not making up. I didn't want to do tshuva, I didn't. But Hashem pushed me to the truth. He pushed me as an act of grace to recognize that I also have a part in the Torah. That I also belong in the zone of holiness, of purity. That I can also pray. When I came, in the, one of the first times that I came to, went to a mikveh, I wanted to purify myself from all my sins, from all my imaginations. I took off my shirt after fighting with myself that I will go to a mikveh, a real decent mikveh. I went, I took off my shirt. One of the FFBs over there, the from from birth, saw my terrifying tattoos on my left arm. He starts screaming in the mikveh, What have you done? Masita! Masita! What have you done? Why you did it to yourself? It took me three or four months to recover from that trauma. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're finding yourself that you want to start serving Hashem, you want to put fill in, and you don't know how. First time that I decided I'll be brave, I'll put fill in in the Western Wall. Many times I walked to, I don't know why, I was scared to keep to all mitzvot. I was afraid not to do it right. And I went to the Western Wall after I bought my, my, my set of tefillin and I was standing in front of the Western Wall and there are nice tables over there that you can pray. And I was putting my tefillin of, of my arm on my left arm and when I put my tefillin of head on my head an old person came to me and told me you forgot to take out the house, the covering of the tefillin from tefillin rosh. And then I realized that for the last two weeks that I'm putting tefillin, I'm putting them with the boxes. Like, I didn't know. <laughs> I put one time tefillin in Gadi's store in, in the, the, in the Midrach home. I didn't remember. I thought, that's the way you protect them, that's the way you respect them. I was putting them proudly with the houses, with the boxes, on my head, on my arm. He told me also the one on your arm is, is with the box. I'm like, hmm, hmm, can't talk. <laughs> what can you do? 
But when you break those challenges of your fears, of your low self-esteem, and you keep on marching, keep on walking toward yourself, to find your true self. I didn't found the Torah, I didn't found Mount Sinai, and I don't know the place of the Beit HaMikdash, where the Azara is supposed to... No, I just, I know what is my nature. I know what I want to do with my life. I know that in Shabbat, I don't want to go to the beach in Shabbat. No, I know that I found my quiet with my family in my house. That's where I found myself. I found that I don't like to read novels and, and action books. I like me, I, I rather to learn Torah. I'm enjoying it much, much more to learn about the Torah, ancient scripts of Midrashim. I like to read the Zohar Kadosh. I like to learn Halachot. I enjoy it. My wife thinks I'm crazy, and I cannot argue with that, but <laughs> no one can argue with my wife. But in reality, I found myself and I know what I want to do and that's why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because I want to. It was hard for me to admit, it was hard for me to understand, to recognize, but after you taste, you can see that it's good. After you taste the flavor of Torah, after you taste the flavor of tefillah, of prayer, you can sense the sweetness of those pure water, how it affects your life, how it purifies your mind, how it gives and, 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 and plant confidence and strength inside of you, gives you courage to deal with other challenges and to face more difficulties and not to be scared as you were before. After you winning in few battles, it gives you more confidence to continue in your path. So now every person can find himself that he feels like, oh, I'm in such low place, shell of water, I'm dealing with nonsense, my daily obligations, like judging yourself. But you don't know that what that you are doing is so precious and important in the eyes of Hashem that it's so important that He literally sent you to that place to serve Him. Now you think to yourself, oh, I wish I would serve him over there in Jerusalem. I wish I would serve him over there in that holy place. It's not true. The strongest warriors are those ones that are going and battling in the enemy zone, in a foreign land, in the dark places over there. The light is needed and required. You don't need a candle in the light in the daytime. You, you, a candle in the day is useless. What are you going to do with that? You have a huge torch and it's 12, uh, 12 p.m. What, what do you do with it? It's nothing. It's worthless. You can wave it to yourself. You yourself are going to be burnt from the heat. of It won't illuminate the life of no one. No one needs you. But when you're in the darkness, and you're a small, tiny light. You're a matches box. Every day, one match. Every day, one match. Like candles of Hanukkah. Merkatan, a small candle. But it's shining because of the darkness. And people will see it. And people will recognize it. And people will come to you thirsty to a source of water. Because you found your inner source of water. And then you will be able to water them and to provide it to other people. To provide water? No, to provide an inner access to their inner spring. That they will find themselves and going to start shining on their own. You cannot shine to everyone. You can only shine your own path. You can be only who you are. There is one that is able to be in charge on 1,000 souls. There is one that is able to be in charge on 1,000, to shine to them, to provide a good advice to them. And there is one that is so obligated and tied that Hashem put him in a secret mission that he cannot leave his house, that he must shine his light only to the individual people of his close family. And over there he needs to work like he is doing a secret job for Hashem. And not to think to himself, oh, I'm not a general, I'm not out there, I'm not teaching, I'm not preaching, I'm not whatever. No, it's not your mission. 
A good and loyal soldier is a soldier that when his commander is going to tell him to duck, he will duck. Going to tell him go clean the toilets, he will go clean the toilets without questioning his commander. He will just go and do his obligation by the book. Being nice, being positive, being happy, supporting and loving and respecting and honoring every person in the wide world. Today we stopped to buy some stuff. On the way, a person came to me in the parking lot, shake my hand, told me I want to apologize to your nation on the horrible thing that happened to you in Pittsburgh. I want to express my sorrow to your nation. <clears throat> I didn't know what to say. I told him I'm overwhelmed from your words. It's so amazing. It's warming my heart to hear you. I gave you my business card. I told him you can watch our videos online. I don't know. You put your bread on the waves of the water and the waves will take it somewhere. Told him we can be in touch. Let's talk. Thank you. Appreciate your words. You don't know who he is, but he cares. So can you judge? Oh, a Jewish, a Gentile. No, he's not Jewish. I have my best friends are non-Jews. Amazing people. I will never replace them for another person in the world. Loyal people, amazing people, friendly people, seeking for the truth. Yes. Do I know the roots of their souls to tell you who they are and what's their secret and what's their mission? I don't know. I haven't created them to tell you. But I can tell you that they're shining. I can tell you that they're seeking for the truth. That they're calling in the name of Hashem and that they're asking for Hashem and they're praying to Him on daily basis and they're my friends. King David said, I'll be a friend of everyone that will believe in you, that will have fear from heaven, that his Yir'achamayim will be above his head. He is my friend. And there are thousands and thousands of people like those around us mm -hmm. in the world, waiting for good advice and hoping for complete salvation. And about the redemption that we're talking and yearning and hoping for so long for it to take place in our lives. The two first temples were belonged to the Jewish nation and were used only by the Jewish nation, by Am Israel. But the third temple is the house that will be called the house of prayer to all nations. Ki beiti betefilai karel lechol amin. English. And like, I just said it. <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> and when that temple will rise and we will see it in its glory, in its beauty, we will serve there, over there in the temple, as the Kohanim, as the servants. Because the verse is saying, You will become a holy nation of servants. So if you are Jewish, or if you feel like joining the Jewish nation, you should serve. You should commit yourself to help and to assist and to illuminate the world with the light of truth and love and respect to any person to any human being, just to smile and to be positive and to be supportive and to love. And by that you will reveal the light of the Creator that is treasured inside of you. Because who you really want to be is a positive person. Maybe you're scared to be. Maybe you've been hurt so many times. But who that you want to be is a nice person, a kind person, a friendly person, an inviting person, a supportive person. Maybe you've been traumatized badly. Maybe you've been hurt. Maybe you've been insulted, been destroyed so many times. But who you really want to be is that light that lives inside of you. So we must face our fears and not to be scared of them and to fight with them like they are the worst enemy of our lives because they're trying our fears, trying to take us down, to drown in our depression 
in our sadness, in the black bitterness of despair, not to recognize those treasures that we're holding within, the real qualities of our souls, that our souls are desiring good, souls of warriors that are ready to fight for the truth, for justice, to protect the weak, and to support those ones in need. And we must let our souls shine by not following our fears. If you feel that you can and should express the qualities of your spirit, of your soul through music, you must create music to the world because the world needs your music. And if you feel that by your art you're going to reveal the light and the voice of your soul, you must put your effort on your art with no fears at all and not to look to the sides because that's the light of your soul. And if you feel that your family needs you and you feel that they cannot survive without your support, you should be a supportive person in your house and to fulfill your obligation. And it's not a prison for life. It's that you are connecting yourself to the Creator in real time, in the present. Now He wants me to serve Him like this, I'll serve Him like this. When He will want me to serve Him like that, I'll serve Him like that. One day He wanted me to learn how to put fill in. In the next day He will want me to teach someone how to put fill in. In one day He wants me to learn how to read the Aleph Bet. In the next day I can find myself teaching thousands of people the same simple class that I just learned yesterday. You don't know still who you are. The Creator has not revealed yet the greatness of our souls. How precious. And amazing they are. And when He will, those ones that will recognize it, that will recognize their destiny, will rise to be lighthouses, to illuminate the world with the light of faith. So we better put our effort on that mission today. Start working on finding our true selves, recognizing the qualities that are treasured inside of ourselves and to use our skills to spread peace and understanding between people and to guide everyone in need, not in the right path, not to a certain destiny, to find who He really is, to find out that the Creator was with Him from before creation until the last day of His life, that the Creator lives with us eternal life, but we need to live with Him eternal life. Means to live every moment of your life, no matter where you are. To live this moment with Hashem. To accept that moment. To be honest in that moment. To be nice. To be kind. As kind as you can. And if you need to be strong and to protect yourself or people, you should be a fighter. You should be a warrior. King David was a poet, was a player, was a singer, and was a warrior. He was a politician, he was a king, and he was a fighter. He was a scholar, and he was a husband, and he was a father. And he was doing all of that in his 70 years of life. You should do the same. With your soulmate, you should be her or his soulmate. You should be a partner. You should be the best friend. You should be loyal with your children. You should be a parent. With your friends, you should always be there. With people in the street, you need to be a positive light. You need to smile. You need to shine. And when Moses nullified himself completely to Hashem, people, when they saw him, they couldn't stare, look and see his face anymore. Because the light was so strong that the face of Moses was shining the light of Hashem, the light of the Shekhinah Kedusha. When you raise the light of your soul above the physicality, the thickness of your body, and your soul starts to shine, people, when they see your light, they don't see your individual light. They see the light of Hashem that is shining through you. 
They're connecting themselves to Hashem because of your good job. Because that you were honest, they're asking themselves, maybe I can be also honest. They hear your honesty. They hear it in your voice. When you're nice, you're being a good example to other people that start wondering, maybe I can be also nice. I can be nice to that person. I can be nice. Maybe today I'll be nice to my neighbor, to my friend. Mm -hmm. And people are receiving the power from you that you worked on yourself to become your true self, to come back to your true self, to become themselves, to go back to the roots of their souls. When I started my tshuva process, I was not looking for Hashem. I was not looking for the Torah. I felt bad with who I was. I was not complete with myself. I was not happy to go partying. I was not happy to go clubbing. I was not happy doing drugs and, 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 and drinking alcohol. I was not happy driving fast. I was not happy. Even though I was smiling, I was not happy from within. I was scared. And I was always like aware that something won't go terribly wrong. A few days ago I told them to my students on the miracle that took place in my life. I told them that I was with my friend in Amsterdam and suddenly a violent person took a stick, wanted to start beating us and suddenly from the other side of the street we hear, Kasuto! And three friends of us, and Gadi was the leader of that group, or at least an equal partner in that group. They came. I told you that story if you heard that class two days ago. Gadi suddenly, we didn't know that they are in Amsterdam. They came also, they went also to Amsterdam. We were friends in Jerusalem, but we didn't make that connection. We flew together, me and one friend, and they went three together. In the moment that our life was in risk and a person, violent person wanted to start hitting us in the middle of the night and we were not sober, <laughs> we were not able to deal with that situation, those three warriors came for our side and standing and calling us, Kasuto! And like that person, like a, how you say, like a rat, he ran in the alleys, disappeared into the darkness. Instead of hitting us and trying to rob our money or whatever he planned to do over there. And Hashem sent holy messengers to, <coughs> our messengers to us to help us, to protect us again. Not based on our holy journey in Amsterdam. <laughs> not because we were looking for graves of righteous people, searching the legacy of our nation in ancient Amsterdam. No, that was not the purpose of our trip. Trip will tell you something about the mission that we were in 20 years ago, 21 years ago in Amsterdam. In reality, Hashem supervises on you, protects you, looking around you and checking what will be the perfect environment for my child. And even if sometimes it's rough, and even if sometimes it hurts, and even if sometimes you can lose your mind, it builds an armor around you. It gives you skills to deal with certain situations that if you will understand the importance of your mission, you will understand how you've just been qualified to rescue others from the similar situation as your old one. When Batya Bat Paro called Moses Moshe, the reason she called him Moshe is written in the verse. Ki min meshitihu, because I took him out of the water. But in the ancient language of Hebrew, it's not precise. If based on the reason that she took him out, she wanted to call him in his name, so she was supposed to call him Mashui, not Moshe. Moshe is the person that is taking other people out of the water. That's the meaning of the word Moshe. 
He is saving others from the water. When Batya Bat Paro called him Moshe, she didn't meant that he will remember what happened to him in his history that he been took out of the water because else she would call him Mashui that he been took out from the water but instead she called him Moshe because she wanted to remind him like that I took you out of the Nile of the water you should go and take others out from the water that's why she named him Moshe because she realized that the fact that he'd been saved was not for himself, was for the purpose of his life to go and save others. <coughs> and that's why when we are recognizing miracles and wonders and amazing combinations and coincidences in our life, we should recognize in it the mission and purpose of our lives. To go and to spread and plant faith in the hearts of all of our surroundings. Not with pressure. Pressure is not talking to us. Not with anger. Anger is not the language we understand. Not with rebuke and not with violence and not with great wisdom. Just with simplicity. With friendship. With loyalty. With good attributes. To be polite and nice. Like you like people talk to you, that's how you talk to others. Like that you hate people talk to you, don't talk to others. Always, always be honest. And then the light of Hashem will shine through you. Many people think Mashiach is far. I'm telling you, if we will just gonna hold ourselves to that simplicity and gonna spread it in the world, Mashiach is already walking between us. You don't need big things. You don't need big things. Chad Bet Knish Tachada. One place of truth. One place that people are uniting themselves with truth. With love. Willing to do good. This is what that is needed for the redemption to come. A group of honest people. You cannot make honest people. You can make yourself honest. That's the only thing you can do. And to pray for others, to care about others, to help them in their journey. But if you won't work on your honesty, on your kindness, on your generosity, nothing will work for you as a righteous person in the holy path. The holy path is the path of holy people. You want to be holy? Work on your holiness. You want to be truthful? Don't lie. Don't make up stories. Stop avoiding the truth, your fears. Be honest. Go and say, I was wrong. I was weak in that time. That's the greatest truth of them all, to be able to admit in your mistakes. That's the highest and most divine truth of them all, that you can stand in front of King of all kings and to tell him, is it too late now to say sorry? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to pray for Justin Bieber to complete his shuva soon, <laughs> to join our Muna family <laughs> with all of our lost siblings around the world. Thank you very much. Hazakulavuch. <laughs> Emuna Project is a non profit organization. Please help us and support our wonderful activities around the world. We're crossing the country now on our way to Texas and from there to California and then back to New York and with many, many stops on the way. Hopefully, we'll be able to stop in Pittsburgh on our way back as well. Bezat Hashem from heaven, they will help us all to spread the light of truth, the light of love, light of Hashem Amen. in the world. And that all of his children will remember their roots and will connect themselves to him with a happy heart and a wishing soul. Amen. Can you hear it? Amen. Subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com.